Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Wednesday live stream. I have to tell you, I do like these days. I like these days because we are in the green and everybody's happy. And even on X, what was known as Twitter before, everybody's having a great time. Nobody's mad or pissed off at anybody. Everybody's just really in the zone and really just glad that they're here. And I got to tell you, congratulations for sticking around because it's been a bumpy ride. But as we all know, as I'm sure some of you have checked your portfolio maybe once today, you will see that things are up. And uh, there's been a lot of big gainers. Most of them are meme coins. And we'll talk about that later. But we're going to see that in the last 24 hours, everything's doing pretty well. And of course, wow, look at Shiba Inu, 10%. 13.5% for near. Fetch AI, 12%. Of course, I'm talking about all the things that I own. So of course, I'm very excited. But really what it comes down to is CPI inflation numbers. And it was it came out as as expected. So that leads the market to start to celebrate. And that's fine. That's great. But the Kobayashi letter really just plays it out and says, yeah, you know what? CPI inflation is at 3.4%. And it looks like the Fed is doing its job. We'll see how it all works out because, of course, they are data-driven moving forward. But just remember, and this was a really good post that they talked about, look, that's CPI. But just remember that car, in, and it just goes through all the different inflation that are the outliers. Car insurance, transportation, hospital services, car repair, homeowner inflation, rent inflation. So, of course, we know these numbers are great for the market. But in day-to-day -day lives, we sort of think to ourselves, hey, wait a second. Things aren't as rosy as what has appeared. However, S&P 500 and the traditional markets are really happy. They're up a whopping 1.17%. Watch out. That is huge. And that's why I'm mostly in crypto because that would put me to sleep. But of course, if we take a look, and I'm going to steal some information from Ben's website as I usually do, the Pearson Correlation, correlation, just to see how we are as far as correlated to the stock market. And we're going to see, if you can see right here, this is total market cap, this is Bitcoin, as it's correlated, of course, you know, total market cap to, a th to ETH and Bitcoin to Bitcoin obviously is, or Bitcoin to, to total market cap is obviously almost a perfect 1.0, which is a perfect correlation, essentially going in the same direction. Zero is not correlated at all. And of course, the negatives are doing the exact opposite. One could go up, one could go down. And we take a look here at the S&P 500, we're almost at 0 0.5, not as a perfect correlation, but as time has gone on, oof, this looks pretty bad. Let me zoom into this. Reset the zoom. It's all over the place. But if we just kind of zoom in a little bit to see where we're at, this is the zero correlation coefficient at zero roughly right here in this green line. And we can see that for the most part, as time has gone on, we've seen to be more correlated to the traditional markets themselves. And you have to ask yourself, well, why is that? What's really going on? Of course, if we take a look at <laughs> the Bitcoin ETFs, the answer is right here. As traditional finance starts to understand just how important Bitcoin is, and of course, we all know this, we see the, the Bitcoin ETF numbers come up, and we can just see that, the, that TradFi is really coming in hot. I put this together just to kind of show everybody who is coming in and the amount of money that's being put forth. If you'd like to share this with any of your friends who have not been orange-pilled, there is a link in the description. It's called the Bitcoin ETF slideshow. And we need to see here, this, of course, I took most of the information from uh, Bitcoin Magazine. And there's going to be a lot of people who are not happy. That's Dave Ramsey, doesn't get it. I don't really care if he gets it or not. I don't have time for that. It's just, this is what it is. A lot of people just don't get it, even though they've been around for a long time. That's fine. At some point when they want to come in, great. I'm all, I'm all happy for them. But again, this is what we have. So fund manager Booth Bay, this is just actually today, almost 150 million in BlackRock spot Bitcoin ETF. Millennium Management, they hold $2 billion in spot Bitcoin ETFs. Also fund manager Pine Ridge Advisors, they put in $205 million. And then of course, what it talks about here, it says that's 20, that's a quarter of their 890 million assets under management. So don't take this lightly. These are a lot of people who have been in this space or in the traditional finance space for quite some time. And they go, you know what? This is looking pretty good. This would, If this would have happened in 2017 when I first got in, the parabolic bull run would have had no end just to see what it is. And it just takes a long time. But here we are. Also, of course, state of Wisconsin, the investment board disclosed it holds almost 100 million. The state of Wisconsin investment board. Switzerland, Large bank UBS has a big, big position. The Bank of Montreal, 
disclose the Bitcoin ETFs. Hedge fund Bracebridge, 262 million of ARK spot Bitcoin ETF and 81 million of Black Rocks. Maybe uh, something with the fees, but yeah, this is pretty amazing. And then of course, JP Morgan comes in, even though Jamie Dimon talks about how it's, it's nothing. It's, uh, it's for the dregs of society. It's for the people who are in uh, terrorism and cartels, but yet here they are buying the ETF. What are you gonna do? The Rothschilds revealed holds BlackRock and Grayscale spot Bitcoin ETF in the recent spiling. And then of course, rubric capital of 3.3 billion. Oh, excuse me. The 3.3 billion asset under management rubric capital owns 60 million of BlackRock spot ETF. And of course, another big bank, Wells Fargo. And just for clarity, JP Morgan is the largest bank in the world, especially number, it's definitely number one in the United States. And Wells Fargo is number three. So if we just look through that, of how people are coming in. And of course, the soothsayers or the people, excuse me, the doomsayers who say this will never amount to anything. It just it never surprises me as time just rolls on, just how wrong people get it. Anyhow, let me just think about that in the comment section. But the question is then, like I put in here, is, is it time to sell? And I've got a couple of videos, there's links in the description of when I'm gonna sell 80% of my crypto. And there's two different versions of this. One is for Bitcoin and the blue chips. The other one is for the crazy meme coins and the, and the, and the degenerate stuff that I get into as I talk about the half and half method. So watch those two videos, that will kind of roll things out. But just looking at this, taking a, a bite from the uh, first video, why when I'm selling 80%, let's just take a look at some of the indicators I take a look at. And some of these you can find on uh, look into Bitcoin. Others you can find on Ben's website. Look into Bitcoin is free. Ben's website is fantastic. And, but of course, it's, uh, there's, there's some things that are free there, but some are paid. But what I want to take a look at is the NUPL. I found this interesting today because I was, I was going back and looking over things. I think I screwed up. And I'm going to show you why. So the NUPL, it's market value and realized value. It's current price of Bitcoin multiplied by the number of coins in circulation. Of course, that's the market value. Realized value takes the price of each Bitcoin when it was last moved. So remember, there's some wallets that haven't moved forever. And of course, there's other wallets that have been dormant for years and years and years and finally moved. And of course, we think that could be a selling, but it's not always the case. But I just wanted to show you this real quick. Again, like I think I screwed up because when I talk about this, of course, I like colors. I'm kind of simple. And when it's in this green area, it's capitulation. It's a good time to buy. Like this was back in 2011. <laughs> I do find this funny, actually. You could have bought it for four bucks, but then as it gets overheated, it's seven dollars, which is almost double the price. So I, I kind of see where it's going. But right now, I think that's laughable, isn't it? You're like, well, I could have bought it at four, but I got screwed and got it at seven, and it dropped down to five. <laughs> Sorry, I, I, I found it. It's just interesting. And then, of course, over here, coming into the more of the uh, current time frame, 2022, you could have got a 20,000, could have got a 19,300, 18,000, 18,500. And it was right here for us. And of course, during this time, I was talking about dollar cost averaging. Now, did I back up the truck and buy as much as I should have? No, I didn't. I dollar cost average. I was trying to be responsible. Looking back, of course, I should have just dumped everything into it. But hey, you win some, you lose some. Can't uh, go all in at some point. Maybe I should have went in at seven bucks. Sorry, didn't even realize it was actually there. But to take a look at this and to zoom in, of course, as we get into these upper parts, and we're talking about hope and fear and optimism, belief in denial and euphoria, these are great times to, to, to get out. But if you want to talk about taking profits, and I, I talk about this all the time, so it's kind of interesting that I missed this. Once we passed here at 61,000, and we started to climb in the, in the half version of this belief denial. Look at this. We topped out at 72,000. I should have taken more profits along here because we went from 70 down to, what is this, 59? Yeah, and it was right here for me to see. But then that's just one indicator, right? You can't just say it. Then some people say, well, why the hell would I do that? Because of course it's gonna go to 100,000, maybe. It just depends on time. And I'm not telling you what to do. I'm just saying that, you know, as time goes on, you're going to start to think about uh, taking profits, which is the hardest thing to do. Anyhow, look at this one, Puel Multiple. I like this one because it's taking a look at the profitability of the miners. This is daily issuance in USD is, of course, high uh, as far as a 365 day moving average from the selling pressure from miners. And of course, as we went forward after the Bitcoin halving, there's going to be more sell pressure because 
it's the same job these guys have to do, but they get paid half. Hopefully transactions go, <laughs> transaction fees, which seem to be doing pretty well. But look at this one, same thing. If I would have noticed, we topped out again, March 11th. Well, multiple is 2.43. Should have probably taken the profits. There was a verification. Then of course, as time has gone on, we've, we've dropped down because I mean, Bitcoin miners can only do so much. Look at that. 19th of April to 21st of April. Having was on the 20th. Yeah, drops down. So there's, there's two where you think, well, I could have, but is that time to take profits right now? Yeah, probably not. Not for me, but you can do whatever you want to do. How about this one? Time and risk bands. This again is on Ben's website. Right now we're at 0 0.6 to 0 0.7, which if, if you talk about dynamic dollar cost averaging, as you're the, in these time and risk bands, as the price of Bitcoin starts to decrease, the risk goes down because it's not so risky to pick up Bitcoin at four bucks or whatever it was back in the day. But now we're all the way over here, 0 0.6 to 0 0.7. And there's only been 312 days that this has actually happened in its entire existence. Me personally, I start to, this is where my starting point for dollar cost averaging is. And then as I dynamic DCA, then you go 2X, 3X, 4, 5, 6, 7, and go from there. There's a video on dynamic DCA, I'll link in the description. But when I start to take profits, I start to look at the 0 0.7 to 0 0.8, 0 0.8 to 0 0.9, and then this of course is the, is the red flashing 0 0.9 to 1.0. There's only been 18 days in Bitcoin's entire existence where it's been that high. So right now, no. And then of course, MVRVZ score, market value versus realized value, and the Z kind of takes everything out. We can see that we are quite low in the two, in the two range, not even close to the, to the red part. So no, not really. And then of course, my big one that I like to always take a look at, the Pi cycle top. This is the one that you have the 350 day moving average times two is a cross of the 111 day moving average, which this was created in 2019 by Philip Swift. And it did a pretty good job looking back at 2017, 2013, and then it did a pretty decent job in 2021. But moving forward, we can see that they haven't crossed over yet. They're getting closer, but it's not that time. So for me, I just don't see it as a, as a selling opportunity right now. I just want to put that out there for people because nobody seems to talk about this. And I think it screws up a lot of people, especially when you're kind of new and getting into it. You're like, when do I sell? Do I ever sell? Again, that's a personal decision. I just did a video on the five rules, watch that. And of course we can talk about how you can never sell and, and just have Bitcoin for goods and services and then borrow against it. I get that, I get that, I get that. But at some point, maybe you wanna offload some of those tomato coins, those ridiculous coins that do absolutely nothing. Just saying, could be an option for you. And that's why I talk about this all the time because it's easy to buy the dip like everybody talks about. It's a heck of a lot harder to actually sell. Anyhow. Let me know what you think about that in the comments section. And then lastly, uh, just real quick, tomorrow is our uh, NFA live show. I don't know if it's, well, Ben will be there. Um, guy, we'll see, it's either me, it's either me, Guy Ben, or me, Ben, Jessica, or me, Ben, Ben, or me, Ben and Nick. Some of some of them take it, I'm not for sure who it actually is. So I'll let you guys know that'll be tomorrow. Usually that is uh, 9 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, 6 a.m. Pacific. But that's it for today. So look, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up, consider subscribing. Everything we talk about is time sensitive. Now, I wanted to go over some questions that I saw in the comments section. So stick around. If you got to go, take off. Thanks for stopping by. I do appreciate you.